the prime minister today evening would be formally inaugurating the startup india campaign i consciously use the word uh, campaign because at the end of the day it's going to be a program with which uh, the government would only be at an arm's length as mr sitaraman said essentially a facilitator with very little a virtually negligible role in day to day interventions in this business i must confess that uh, we normally have a large number of formal launches uh, in this plenary hall of the vigyan bhavan but this one is with a difference a difference because uh, is probably the first time that uh, i see a large number of potential entrepreneurs here most of whom at least i must confess i am not familiar with otherwise at all these formal launches we always have the usual suspects and that itself is indicative of the break that startup india is going to make with the what conventional economy and the formal launches of programs in the conventional economy itself are i think another very significant uh, difference of what makes it a landmark event is a final break or the ultimate break that you have with the conventional license raj of india we ostensibly we ostensibly broke away from it in 1991 i have certainly not uh, a great favorite with those who supported the idea of that license raj even at that moment because uh, that was conceived with an idea that the government would decide as to what businesses can be carried on and by whom they could be carried on the government would also decide the geographical locations and the volumes of those businesses and the entire intention or the eventual consequence of that was to restrict the energies of the people to constrain them and find virtues in that constrained economy itself we did well to break off from it in 1991 but the break was only partial it was partial because uh, who would be funded there was an invisible role of the state control over land land permissions foreign investment proposals environmental clearances and of course unless the political nods came to venture into newer areas which involved a lot of capital a lot of energy going into it an entrepreneur or an investor were normally reluctant our effort over the last few years has been to restrict the role of the state essentially as a facilitator or in policy domain when prime minister modi was voted to power in 2014 if i look back at the changes and the direction of the changes in which we moved in i think some of them are extremely significant i find that the traffic of industry 
visiting North Block has almost ended. There are no piles of FIPB clearances which are pending. There are no files to be pushed. Amitabh is being called repeatedly an evangelist because the DIPP was the corridor in which most people visited in order to have their proposals uh, supported by the government. Its role is now of one of a campaigner. Its role is now one of an enabler. And I think these are extremely important changes which have taken place. What is then going to be the key difference once the startup movement picks up? And if I put it in uh, a very simple sentence, it's going to be the eventual freedom from the state that Indian entrepreneurship will now enjoy. It will only be a limited support of the state in terms of its programs so that there is an easier availability of capital, there is a friendly tax regime which is available, and there is an unleashing of the energies of an Indian entrepreneur where he can use technology, he can use his sense of innovation, he can use his enterprise, and then for him, sky is the real limit. And I think there is no other option or alternative that an overpopulated country like India has at the moment today. If you look at the direction in which uh, the conventional global economy is moving today, we are almost moving from a crisis situation literally by the day. Nobody really can envisage down the tunnel, looking down the tunnel, as to what the situation of the world economy one year or two years from now is going to be. Nobody can seriously predict as to what the emerging challenges down the next few months are going to be. Earlier, the challenging situations used to come, a crisis-like situation used to come, almost once uh, in a decade. Today it may emerge even twice in a day. You may have the impact of uh, Chinese economy and their currency on one part of the world. You may have uh, the oil prices striking you at the other part of the world and you'll have a global impact simultaneously of these challenges. Unquestionably, the world economy has slowed down. Now, we can take a limited satisfaction, and I consciously use the word limited satisfaction, that even in a crisis-like situation in the world, we are growing much faster. The world almost universally recognizes us as probably the fastest growing amongst the major economies. But then we are not without our own challenges. We are fully conscious of uh, the adverse uh, situation in which uh, we are struggling to keep uh, respectable growth rates in the Indian economy. We have certain advantages. We have a booming services sector. We have a manufacturing sector slowly growing. We have increased our public spending. We've opened our doors wide enough and uh, foreign investment is coming in a big way. At least in the urban areas, we can see an increasing demand. And therefore, these are the engines which are keeping this growth rate alive. But at the same time, we also have challenges of... Uh, and realistically, if we recognize those challenges, a lot of our agricultural production, which is rain-fed, Private investment is slow. We've had two weak seasons of monsoon. And as my colleagues just mentioned, the governments now have limited potential to create jobs within the governmental system. The private sector's own uh, 
expansion itself is throwing up a challenge because they've overstressed themselves and their stress in turn gets reflected on our banking system, something which the Reserve Bank and the government acting in tandem are now over the next few months uh, going to add to the banker's ability to improve and be able to lend in a greater, with a greater amounts. Now it's under these circumstances that the government really had to explore new areas. And it is amongst those newer areas that we conceived of the mudra scheme. Now the mudra scheme that the government conceived of is actually intended to target 25% of the bottom part of India's population. So people get loans from refinance agencies, public sector banks, private sector banks and other agencies. Earlier they were being exploited by money lenders at very high rates, now they get at the banking rate. And I must say that the program has been reasonably successful in the last four to five months. Uh, almost uh, 1.73 crore uh, entrepreneurs have uh, enabled of the, those loans. By the end of this financial year, the figure would be significantly higher. And seeing the success of the movement, we are going to roll over that program year after year. And smaller entrepreneurs are being created by that process. On the Independence Day, the Prime Minister had announced the Stand Up India scheme. The Stand Up India would be separately launched. But it's a program which uh, envisages that women entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs belonging to the scheduled caste and the scheduled tribes. Now these were segments which are not throwing up entrepreneurs. Each bank branch, public sector or private sector, would actually adopt one in the scheduled caste, scheduled tribe category and one in the women's category. So they'd adopt two such entrepreneurs and fund them to set up establishments. It could be a trading establishment, it could be a manufacturing establishment. And by this process, at least, uh, you could target amongst these segments which have not been throwing up entrepreneurs, almost 300,000 new entrepreneurs over the next one or two years to be created. And then the Prime Minister's own idea, and this I must confess was his original idea, that this is the world where startups need to be encouraged. Last year in the budget, I had even suggested a startup fund for helping uh, the creation of the startups. Needless to say, both the banking system and the government would make the resources available. We've already worked upon uh, an entrepreneur-friendly taxation regime. There are some steps which can be taken by notifications, which would be taken forthwith. Others require a legislative provision which can only come as a part of the finance bill when the next budget is presented in order to create a friendly taxation regime for startups. And we expect uh, the new India taking a cue from those Indians who elsewhere in the world, particularly in the Silicon Valley, which has sent a very large delegation here, utilize their sense of entrepreneurship, their sense of innovation, generated ideas and created wealth. And in turn, that wealth now is being used to supplement and support future startups uh, uh, across the country and elsewhere in the world. As I said, uh, in the beginning that this would be literally the final break with the license Raj because uh, the regime intended to be created is to give a complete freedom from the state. The more this sector becomes unregulated, I think uh, the better it will be in the interest of the segment. 
one of the reasons over the last two decades why India became an important uh, IT center was because we had no laws governing the field. And I think this entire campaign is intended to create a supportive system and that's the role of the state. And the rest really is your own sense of entrepreneurship. We are deeply encouraged by the extent of response that we visited, which we witnessed over the last few days. Uh, in hindsight, I think it would have been uh, even understandable if this, uh, notwithstanding the cold winter today, this function had been held in a stadium because that's the number of people who wanted to attend this function and identified with this, uh, uh, the Startup India launch itself. Because this is an area where people want uh, a complete ecosystem which is friendly to innovation, which is friendly to enterprise, where the best ideas in the world would be created. And those ideas leading to innovation would perhaps uh, provide uh, this country the best that is yet to be seen. Let me, at the, towards the end, uh, congratulate the <coughs> Department of Industrial Policy and Promotion, my colleague Mrs. Sitaraman and Mr. Amitabh Kant and all their colleagues for having taken this great initiative. And let me express a hope uh, that somewhere in this uh, auditorium and elsewhere where people, potential entrepreneur, are listening to us, uh, probably there are some world beaters uh, somewhere in this crowd. And I'm sure over the next few years, we'll create that environment <laughs> where uh, you'll all become uh, very powerful names to reckon with. We'll all be very proud of you. Thank you very much.